First, let's make sure our NPCs say different things to the player, depending on whether or not the player is carrying an item and whether it's the right one. So to do this, let's open up our parent NPC object, which is under the objects group under NPCs, and it's OPJPAR NPC. And let's open up the variable definitions that we created for this. And we have three of these already. We have loop range one, loop range two, and my text. But we're going to add some more. So for each one, we're just going to click the add a new variable button. And we'll just fill these in. So the first one is going to be called my item. And where it says type, I want to choose an asset. Now, once we do this, we want to be able to determine which asset we're allowed to choose or what type of asset. So I'm going to click on the little options gear and this little drop down uh, window pops up and let's choose objects. And you'll notice it just highlights and is linked to here. We're just restricting the kind of asset you can choose for this variable definition to an object. It just makes our lives a little easier later on. And for the default value, we're just going to choose none. But you'll notice that we can start selecting objects here. So for the next one, let's choose add. And we'll call this one item text happy. And this is going to be a string. So these are the various things that the NPCs will say in certain situations. So we have a generic my text, but we want this one to be if you've given the uh, NPC the correct item. So again, we're just going to put in defaults here and we'll change them for each of the characters later on. So I'll just call this text for the right item. And we'll add another variable. And we'll call this one item text sad. Once again, we'll make it a string. And we'll just put in default text that we can change later. And in this next variable, we're calling item text done. This is what the NPCs will say after you've given them the correct item. So that you can remember that they are they have been dealt with already. And for the type here, we'll choose string. We'll add another variable. We'll call this one sequence happy. And we're going to make the type an asset, we want to be able to specify which asset we're going to call with this. And to do so, we're going to click on the options gear. And we want to choose sequences, because we only want to be able to choose a sequence for this case. And for the default, let's just choose none, which gives us no one here. And we'll add in our final variable, which we will call sequence sad. This will also be an asset. And I'll click the gear to once again choose sequences. And for the default, we'll choose none. So now that you have these presets, we can customize the content for each of the NPCs. So now we need to make sure each of our three NPCs say something different when you speak to them. So in the asset browser, you can go to objects, NPCs, and you have them there. Let's just start with the baker. And if we click on variable definitions, You'll see all those new variable definitions that we created are here. So we can go ahead and start editing these. So I'm just going to put in text that I think makes sense. You can put in something completely different. So I'm going to edit the my item variable. And I'm going to choose an object, go to items, and I'm going to choose the rolling pin for the baker. That's the item he wants. And I'll edit item text happy. And I'll just write some flavor text here. Let's try not to make it too long. And for item text sad, we'll give him something less ebullient. And for item text done, we'll give him some thank you text. And we'll override sequence happy. And we're going to choose 
under sequences, the seq underscore baker underscore happy sequence that we created. And for the sad one, we're going to override that and choose the seq underscore baker underscore sad sequence. And that's our baker taken care of. And now he'll be customized with some new text and links to the correct sequences. Next, we will update the teacher and give her some different variable definitions. So we've just got that window open here, and we're just going to override each of these new variables that we created and put in something that makes sense for the teacher. So for my item, we're going to choose a different object. We'll go to items, and we're going to choose the apple for her. But honestly, you can choose whatever you want and make it fit. We'll override the item text happy here, put in something else. Don't think we'll be winning any writing awards with this flavor text, but that's okay. We're going to override item text sad and give a more uh, less excited uh, text here. And item text done. Some thank you text. She's very excited about teaching. And we'll override the sequence happy, and we're going to choose that happy sequence we made for the teacher. So uh, seq underscore teacher underscore happy. And then for sad, seq underscore teacher underscore sad. And that's our teacher setup. Let's move on to the grocer and do the same thing for him. So I've opened up his object from the asset browser. Going to click on variable definitions and let's start overriding these new variables and putting in something that makes sense for him. So we'll override my item. And I'm going to go to objects, items, and I'm going to make his item the watering can, which is obj underscore item six. But you'll notice that the items we've included, they can kind of be mixed and matched. So you really can choose anyone you like and just sort of make it fit. We'll override item text happy and give him some new flavor text. And for item text sad, we'll change that to something a little more neutral. And for item text done, give him some thank you text. Very dramatic. And most importantly, for the sequence happy and sequence sad variables, we're going to override each. And let's choose the correct sequence. So it should be seq underscore grocer underscore happy for sequence happy and seq underscore grocer underscore sad for the sad one. So the grocer is all done now. Feel free to review your NPCs if you're not happy. I actually realized that before I had a much more neutral statement in here for his my text. So I'm just gonna take this opportunity to change that now and put in a bit more of a clear hint to the player about what he wants. And if you want to do the same for your baker or teacher, you can just double check with all their texts and make sure you're happy. But of course, you can always change it later. Make sure not to give all three NPCs the same item that they want, or else the game essentially won't work and you won't be able to progress till the end. But once you've got all three of those ready to go, we can move on to the next step.